All right, I said I was going to introduce to you two important types of series and sequence. So I just introduced APs to you, arithmetic progressions, uh, and this is one of the examples I gave when we were listing them out. When there's a common ratio, we call it something ever so slightly different. We call it instead, so as an example, like you saw before, I think the one I gave you was a half plus a quarter plus an eighth. You can come up with anything you like. You could say, you know, one plus three plus nine, etc. That would be another GP, geometric progression. Now I'm going to pose this same question to you. How do you sum a, that, that, that kind of progression? How do you sum this series, evaluate what it's equal to? For example, suppose I stopped somewhere like, oh, let's go with uh, 243. Okay, that's a, that's a power three, pretty sure. Um, <clears throat> how are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? Now, I'm going to give you a moment to think. You've seen, you worked out pretty quickly, actually. I mean, some of you have seen the problem before. But you worked out pretty quickly a strategy that would work here. Can you do something similar with this one? I'll give you a moment to um, fiddle with it, and then we'll have a go together. Okay. you seen this problem before? Yeah. You remember it? Just don't. Or you, you recognize it, but you can't remember it. Is that? I've yeah. done it before. Yep. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Often, it becomes easier to tackle a problem. Think back to our first week and the, tr the problem solving strategies I was trying to teach you. It it's often better if you can dissect something and sort of bring it down to pieces that are smaller, right? And that's the reason why, even though it doesn't look like this is actually going to help us, why I've done this, okay? How have I gotten from this line into this line? What have I done? I multiplied all the terms by three, right? Now that was not an accident. I chose three, not four or five or six or seven. Why do you think I chose three? What what what's the importance of three to this series? Each of them is multiplied. It, it's the common ratio, okay? So since each of them is multiplied by three, multiplying by three one more time creates a series that do you notice is very closely connected to this series, right? It'll help if we have some names on this. Um, this series up here, it's, um, it's a sum. I'm going to add all these up in a second. How many terms are there? Can you work out how many terms there are? Six. There are going to be six terms because um, you don't have to write this, but it might be helpful for you. They're all powers of three. Do you notice that? This is three to the one. This is three squared. This happens to be three to the five. What's the first term? Three to the zero. Three to the zero. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, terms and then you've got the zero term, so six in total. So I'm going to call this S6, right? This is the sum of the first six terms. Okay. If this is S6, then what is this? You, you told me how I got from the first line to the second line. What is it? Six times three. I just multiplied three, right? I'm going to call it three lots of S6. Okay. Now do you remember I said to you, by multiplying by three, because three is the common ratio, this series here has a lot in common with this series. Maybe if I draw right down another term here, it will become a little more obvious. 729 is the last term. What is the second last term? 243. It's 243, isn't it? In fact, it's a bit silly to write the dot 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 because there's only one term in between there. It's 81. Okay. Now, can you see that this second, the green series, Every single one of its terms, except for one, every single one of these terms is in the original series. Do you notice that? Except for the biggest one, yes? So therefore, this is true whether there's six terms or whether there's 600. All these terms are going to overlap with the previous one. So therefore, I'm going to subtract one from the other. This is what I was talking about, about trying to simplify this, because uh, there's so many terms here it's hard to deal with, even though I only gave you six. But if I do this subtraction, then it's going to collapse everything down to become something much smaller, right? You can see that this term and this term are going to match up. This term and this term is somewhere in here, right? This term and this term, this term and this term, they'll all match up and they'll all subtract from one another. They'll all cancel, right? So I'll be left with 720, sorry, 29. A whole bunch of zeros from all those terms that overlap. And then what gets left at the end? One. Okay. So have a look at this. Have a look at this. Remember what the question was. It was find out the sum. 
With six terms, you actually can just punch into your calculator. But here, you realize you don't need to. If S6 is what I'm after, sounds pretty good, actually. Um, what will I do? This is just an algebra problem, isn't it? Like, if I called S6, if I called it X, you would solve this in, like, five seconds. What would you like me to do? I, I can divide by 2. I will in a second. It's not, a, it's not obvious from this line why I'm dividing by 2. Why would I do that? Look at the left-hand side. Just think algebra. You're going to collect like terms. 3 of something, take away 1 of something is 2 or something. This is 728. And now as Justin suggests, I will divide by 2. Uh, 3, 6, eight. Yeah? Now, What's wonderful about this approach, just like before, is that now I can generalize this. If I had 600 terms, not six, right? This process would be just as easy, whereas if I was adding them up on a calculator, it would take me 100 times longer, okay? So, just like we did here, see how I have a generalized AP here? How am I gonna handle a generalized GP? Well, for starters, how do I describe it? I still have a first term, right? A. I'll call that the first term. But to advance from one term to the next, I don't add a common difference. What do I do for this GP? I multiply by something. I multiply by a common ratio. So being that it's a ratio, rather than using D for difference, I think I'll call it R for ratio. So the next term will be AR. Yeah? What will the next term be? squared, right? And then the, I've established my pattern, I've got three terms, plus dot, dot, dot. Now, do you remember before how we said the first term has no differences, the second term has one difference, the third term has two differences. Do you notice there's a pattern here? There's a similarity. This term has no common ratios. This one has one. This one has two common ratios. If the last term is the nth term, how many common ratios do you expect it to have? n minus 1. You happy with that? So this is the sum to the nth term. Okay. Now, what was the trick I pulled out that was the clue that didn't look very helpful? What did I choose to multiply by? I chose to multiply by 3 because, not just I like the number 3, even though it's a good number, it's the common ratio. That's the significance of it, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this by the common ratio, okay? And you see what that produces. This will become AR. This will become, this will become AR cubed, and then all the way to the end, what does the last term become? Think about your index laws. Yeah, there's just one more lot of R, okay? All right, I multiply by the common ratio, then what did I, what was I enabled to do once I got to that point? I subtracted one from the other, right? So I'm going to say this, take away this. And you noticed all of these terms collapsed, right? All the in-between terms are left. I was left with this guy, uh, the last term there, and then this guy here, the first term. So how do I state that in these terms? What are the leftover terms? Aaron, there he is, there. And, hey, very good. These are the ones that don't cancel with each other take away A, right? Now, just like before, we collected like terms. Uh, collecting like terms is going to be a bit trickier here because I don't know what R is, but I can still take out a common factor, which amounts to the same thing. If I take out a factor of SN, right, what gets left behind? While we're in a factorizing mood, you can factorize here too, and you get? Yeah? And all I need to do to finish, like Justin suggested before, which was division, right? I'm just going to divide by this, right? So now I get this really nice looking, elegant formula for the sum to the n term. And you can give it a go in this case again if you like. We did the sum to the sixth term, which would be, uh, what was the first term? 1 times 3 to the 6 minus 1 divided by... Uh, 3, take away 1, and then you'll get to your 364, okay? The nice thing here is I can just say, how many terms do you want? 
You want, you want 60 terms? No problem. Okay. You want 600 terms? No problem. My calculator will take care of that. Eventually it won't take care of it because the numbers get too big. But you get the idea. Cool.